Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K-E-S-H-W-A-N-I, Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here. T's ATI study manual, the sixth edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 100. And 34. It should say 134, not 34. And we are on page number 86. On page 86, you will find three problems. We will do the first problem here, problem one of three. I will reproduce the part of the problem already on the blackboard to save some time. It says that we have yearly maintenance, we have yearly maintenance expense for a factory machine. So we have a machine in the factory, and this table will show us the yearly maintenance expense. First column shows us the years since the purchase, since the machine was purchased. At the end of the first year, the total expense to maintain the machine, we are told, was $100. In the second year, in the second year, the expense was $200. In the third year, the expense was $300. The key to understand here is that these are not total expenses over all the years. These are yearly expenses. These are not total expenses over all the years. In other words, first year when the machine was brand new, it did not take much to maintain it. It only cost us $100. As it got a little older, the second year, the same machine cost $200 for us to maintain it. In other words, the total cost for year one and two at that point would be $300. $100 we spent first year, $200 we spent the second year. The third year, the machine got even older, it takes more of maintenance work, it costs us $300 to maintain it, and the total cost of maintaining the machine at the end of the third year would be 100 for the first, uh, first year, 200 for the second year, 300 for the third year, total of $600, not $300, and so on and so forth. The fourth year, of course, as the machine ages, it's going to, it, we are told that it costs $500 to maintain, the fifth year it costs another $500, then it goes down to 400, 450, and then 600, and 650, and finally the last year it cost $700 to maintain the machine. These figures that you see on the blackboard, the reason I put them there is because they are not given to us in the book. In the book what they give us is the chart. And the reason I wanted to start out with the raw data is to make sure that we understand where the chart is coming from so, so, so that we understand how to read the chart. So now we're going to reproduce the chart ourselves based on this data here and see what it looks like. Shall we? We need room here. We need room. The first thing we have to do here when we, when we put anything on the graph, first thing we need to decide when we put anything on the graph is to make a determination as to what depends on what. What, which one is the independent variable, which one is the dependent variable. The independent variable will always go on the x-axis. Independent variable will always go on the x-axis. The y-axis takes the dependent variable. So, ask yourself, does the cost of maintaining the machine depend on how old the machine is, how, how much it costs each year to maintain the machine? Does that cost, does that depend on how old the machine is, or if you tell me the cost, I can tell you how old the machine is. Does the year of the age of the machine depends on how much we spend uh, to maintain it? Of course not. Of course not. The age of the machine does not depend on how much we spend to maintain it. It's the other way around. How much we maintain, how much we spend to maintain the machine will depend on how old the machine is. So which one is the independent variable? Well, we just said it. The maintenance cost depends on the age. So age is the independent variable because the cost depends on it. Cost is the dependent variable. Dependent variable in the y-axis, that's going to be our cost. This is the dollar amount. This is where we're going to put the time. Time in expressed in terms of years here. And let's see what they express in the y-axis. What do they put in the e? It's yearly expense. That's right. Just like you said here. Yearly expense. As a matter of fact, since I don't have the room to rewrite it, that's what this is. This is the y-axis, yearly expense. And on the x-axis, we have independent variable, which is the time, which are the years. And we have 10 years here. Let's see what we can do here as best as I can. So let's put a 1, 2, 3, 4, 
five, six, seven, eight. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, I should not have done that. I don't have enough room. I should have done what I was going to do initially, which is this. We have 10 years, put a 10 here. Halfway through will be the 5. And now we divide our thing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. There we go. Okay, let's get going, shall we? So, on the y-axis, again, we are showing the yearly expense. We are not showing the total expenses over all the years. It's important that we understand that concept. Do you understand? The total expenses over all the years that was that was spent on the machine would have would be what we would call the cumulative expenses. These are not cumulative expenses, these are yearly expenses. So in year one, we spent one hundred dollars. That was very easy. So and it, the highest it goes is seven hundred dollars. So I'm gonna put a stick of seven hundred here. And one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven hundred dollars. And these are expressed in terms of hundreds. These are hundreds. Okay. First year it costs a hundred dollars. I'm going to pick up speed now. First year it costs a hundred dollars. Second year it costs two hundred dollars. There is your second year. It costs two hundred dollars. Third year it costs three hundred dollars. Three hundred dollars for the third year. Fourth year it costs five hundred dollars. It jumps from three hundred to five hundred. Keep in mind, five hundred dollars. The fourth year. Fifth year it costs the same amount of money. Whatever we spend the previous year is the same amount that we spend the fifth year. The sixth year it goes down to four hundred. It goes down to four hundred. That is the sixth year. The seventh year it costs four fifty. So we have to go between four hundred and five hundred. Four fifty, right here somewhere in between. That's our seventh year. The eighth year it goes to six hundred. We're almost done. The eighth year it costs six hundred. Then it costs six fifty between six and seven. Six fifty right here. The ninth year. That's your six fifty. And finally, the last year it costs seven hundred. That's where the chart is coming from. The chart that we see in the graph in the book, that's where it's coming from. Let's see what it looks like, shall we? Let's see what it looks like. So here's our first one, then the second 200, then 300, then it goes to 500, oh sorry, then it goes to 500, it stays at 500. The fourth year, fourth year it goes to 500, then it stays at 500. Sixth year it drops to 400, then it goes up again to 450. Then the 600, and then 650, and finally 700. We, we, we connect this this this, uh, this dot, and we will have the graph, which looks like what you see in the book. Then it's flat, it goes down. Fine. Let's answer the question, shall we? I don't know how much time you have spent already so far on it, but let's answer the question. We need the room, so I have to erase the data. Oh, I shouldn't have erased that part, because that, that tells us what the y-axis was. That's our yearly expense. On the y-axis, on the y-axis we have a dollar sign here, that's our yearly expense. Let's see first answer choice. It says, the cost to maintain a machine is constantly rising. This is cost is constantly rising. Is that the case? That is obviously not the case. We can clearly see it did rise from year one to year three to year four, but then between year four and year five, it was flat. It did not rise. Year four, it cost five hundred dollars. Year five, it cost the same amount of money. Not only that, but the following year, it fell. It fell then. So. There are two occasions when it's not true. One occasion will be from year 4 to year 5 when it did not rise, it was flat, and the following year it fell. It did rise every single year after that, but it did not rise every single year throughout the entire 10 year history. That is wrong. It says cost is constantly rising, that is not true. 
What does B say? B says, for the three years, it costs three hundred dollars to maintain the machine. Well, there we go. That's the part I was talking about a little while ago. It says, let me write it down here. It says, it costs three hundred dollars to maintain the machine over the three-year period. As I told you before, the cost here that you see, the cost here, are are not. Cumulative. These are not cumulative. These are yearly costs, as I explained to you before. So, for the three years, for the first three years, the first year it cost one hundred dollars to maintain the machine. The second year it cost two hundred dollars. The third year it cost three hundred dollars. Therefore, over a three-year period, first three years, for for first three years of the machine's life, it cost a total of six hundred dollars to maintain the bloody thing, not three hundred. Three hundred was the cost to maintain it just the third year. B is wrong because the costs are cumulative. These are not cumulative, or rather, costs are not cumulative, as you can see there. Therefore, it did not cost six hundred dollars to maintain the machine. It, it did not cost three hundred dollars to maintain the machine. It cost six hundred dollars. It cost six hundred dollars to maintain it over the three-year period. Not not six hundred. I'm not going to write everything here. What does C say? It says that the average average rate of change between year one and year four. Well, let's see. The average the average rate of change between year one and year four. Well, let's find out, shall we? So here's our year four. This is our year one. This is how we do it. And the question is, as we go from year four, year one to year four, this is the part where it gets tricky sometimes. How many years is that? How long of a time period it is if I start from year one? When they say year one, that is not the. This is how the time is written. When we talk about the time, time is written as zero, one, two, three, four, and so forth. This is the beginning part. Year one means the end of the first, end, end of the, end of the first year, end of the first year, from the. So year one to year one to year four, when they talk about year one, that means the entire first year is gone. Now we're in the beginning of the second year, second year, third year, and fourth year. Fourth year is technically the end of the third year. Do you understand? So from year one to year four, from year one to year four, that's only three years. This is three years. This is not four years. From from zero to four would have been four years. For year one to year four, it's only three years. You see, they're talking about from year one to year four, right here, from here, one, two, three, four. We're talking, we're talking. This is the first year. This is the second year. This is the third year. So from year one to year four is only three years. And what was the cost in the year four? In the year four, one, two, three, four is five hundred dollars. In year one, it was one hundred dollars, and we divided by three, not four. We divided by three, not four. So the cost is going to be five hundred minus five hundred minus one hundred, which is four hundred, over three. This is the dollar. This is the year. So this is this is the cost per year. This is the cost per year over the three-year period. Three hundred divided four hundred divided by three. And that is not what C says. C and C they divide by four. C is wrong. What the correct answer here is what you see in D here. Answer choice D is the correct answer because we have to take the cost, which is the difference between the two 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 observations, five hundred minus one hundred, and divide it by three, not four. And that's your correct answer. Answer choice D. Do you understand? C is wrong. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye now.